morning and welcome to Tuesdays this morning. It's lovely to have your company today. Hello, you all. Here's what else is coming up today. <laughs> yeah, after the blatant display. For extreme OCD to marry the man of her dreams. Now, though, she's worried she'll relapse after letting her husband into what she terms her clean space. Next, extreme OCD at 10 to 11. First, when Sarah and Raina Davis turned 21, her obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, was so out of control that she struggled to even leave the house. At her worst, she was washing her hair over 70 times a day and would scrub her hands up to 200 times a day. I check my sockets up here and I check my windows. One, two, three, four windows, five, six. I need to check them off, I need to see them. Five, six, seven, eight. I've lost count, don't care. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I shut the door behind me and then two seconds later, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're locked, they're locked. Purpose is done. And then I'll go all the way downstairs. And then I'll go. What if the window was open? I miscount it. And I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten. And then I'll count it all again. Those two, those two. Then I'll come back downstairs, check the windows again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And this is what takes me time before bed and when I'm leaving to go somewhere. Wow, imagine that. Now, Saren is now on the road to recovery after extensive therapy and congratulations, you've even married the man of your dreams. <laughs> uh, but with wedded life comes new challenges. Saren is here today and the man who knows her better than even her hubby does, uh, her dad, Dennis. And uh, Dennis, uh, before we talk to Saren, and a lot of people will find the story extraordinary, uh, you and I were talking before we came in here and... I just think it's really, really hard to imagine what it's like living in the company of somebody so intensely affected by this. Yeah, so I think it's it's very often that we look at the person, the poor person that's the victim of this, but it, very often for the for the family, you know, you're treading on eggshells throughout the whole time. You know, how will Sarah react to this? What's going to happen now? Can we go out? I mean, can we go out for the day? Yeah, and, and it's just all of those things, you know, and I think from a relationship point of view, it, it puts huge pressures on Huge the pressures, family. I mean, it's on your marriage. Say, on the marriage, yes. yeah. Fair, fair to say it's hell. It, it's a living hell, actually. In, you know, when those pressures are on you, and, and in our situation, uh, I was the trusted one. My wife was not the trusted one, and that also affected our relationship. And why was that, Sarah? Why did you turn to, to to your dad more than mum? I think certain people understand OCD better than others, and I think it just really clicked with you, didn't it, Dad? Whereas I think mum found it a bit more difficult to understand. So because I didn't really have to speak or even say anything, and Dad would know exactly what it was that was bothering me, so it became him that became really involved in all of my rituals. Mm. You're 23 now, you yeah. were 18 when you were diagnosed, but how long do you think you were suffering with OCD? Well, I think when I was about seven, I remember it used to take us ages to leave the house. I used to jump in and out of the doorways. I've had varying different types of OCD. Um, and I was so worried that my parents would die if I didn't go in and out this doorway that I felt that I was responsible for keeping them alive. And did and you tell them that at the time? Eventually it came out, but that was a huge responsibility for a seven-year-old to bow on their shoulders. And then when I think I, st I spoke to you about it, you explained to me that that isn't how it works and I don't need to do those things in order to keep them safe. Um, so that was a real turning point when I was younger, and then it got a lot worse when I became 18. Let me ask you this. Um, this is a condition which has a spectrum, right? Mm. And there are people on different types of that spectrum. But what is obvious to me over the course of a number of years talking about this is that people on that spectrum are often not very united. They don't see themselves as the same. What way would you like OCD talked about or referred to? Well, I think, yes, there is a spectrum. I think a lot of people have tendencies and personality traits where they like things to be a certain way or they have to order things in a certain way and that makes them feel happy. But I think that's a preference as opposed to a demand. So when you've got severe OCD, you absolutely have to do it. Otherwise, the world is going to cave in. And it's at that point that your life goes from being fairly normal and manageable to completely blown out of the water, doesn't it? Until you can't even leave the house anymore or do daily tasks, wash yourself and look after yourself. And do they know why, why this happens? What causes this? 
I think there's a lot of debate about what causes it. I mean, they're still not entirely sure, but it's definitely triggered by stress and stressful things that happen in your life. I think some people have a predisposition for anxiety. And then when something awful happens or something stressful happens in someone's life, it comes out as a way of controlling it. You see this man beside you, he strikes me as more than a daddy, but he's also a teacher and a mentor and someone who explains things. And he was explaining things to me there and you were talking about having a preference to do something wanting something done on a certain order and then as you said for instance if you go to the petrol station a lot of people have this situation Ex explain just what you were talking about there well so the, well, we were talking about this if you perhaps trying to put fuel in you think well i've gone over 10 pounds or whatever else it is and you're at 10 pound 50 well i've got up to 11 pounds the next even number well, actually, what's the consequences of you stopping at ten pounds fifty-three? Well, and, and that's the process that we went through with Sarah. And so, what happens? So, if you do this, so what's the worst that could happen? And and then you go through the whole sort of process. Well, so if you did that, so what will happen? And then nothing happens. And isn't the whole theory blown out of? Yeah. It, has, it is to us because it's logic, isn't yeah. it? But when yeah. you said it's so severe, and you said there that, that um, we saw you checking everything, mm. there's also it's two, one of the types of OCD is contamination. So we yeah. saw you there washing your hands, washing your hands, washing your hands. So everything is about cleanliness. What is it about cleanliness? What do you think will happen if you don't wash your hands or you don't keep everything spotlessly clean? I think there's um, a concept of magical thinking, which is where if I touch the sofa, which I think might be unclean, and then I touch my trousers, I take my trousers off, they go in my laundry basket, everything in my laundry basket is then dirty. Then I, I brush past the laundry basket and then that's on that, and I sit on my sofa at home and it just goes on and on and on until everything in your world is suddenly dirty. Mm. And I think then you have a clean world and a dirty world, and it's about protecting those two things. And is that is that what you refer to, you, now that you've got your husband, you've got the man of your dreams, but you also have to have what is termed your clean space. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile the both? Well, he's very good in the sense that he doesn't enable my OCD. He understands that that's not a good way to live, and that having a clean space is essentially what's going to perpetuate my illness and it's going to keep me thinking that I need to do it. So he is very respectful, he's always asked, oh, can I just sit here or could we do that or I'm just going to go and do this and he checks, bless him, he checks <laughs> through everything with me to make sure that we can manage it. But he's so good and so encouraging and not enabling, he doesn't help me do my And Sarah, finally, what is your message to anyone else watching? who either suspects they've got this or who clinically knows that they have this? I think for anyone who suspects they've got it, definitely go to your GP. If you've got someone you trust, like my dad or your partner, that can go with you, that's really helpful because they can explain it to them as well. And anyone that does have it, just keep going. You can do it, but you've got to go towards the fear and not away from it. You've got to face it. You have to on. confront it, absolutely. Yeah. And you've, you've had therapy to do that, which I know you said, you know, that it's something you would go back to if you felt you needed. Absolutely. I think there's different things in life. You know, it goes up and it goes down. And at the moment, I'm looking at maybe going to have more therapy to tackle the things that I'm facing at the moment. Well, your life, my extreme OCD life, and a number of other case studies uh, tonight, Channel 5 at 10 o'clock. Tune into that. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're actually opening up the phone lines today to, to tackle OCD and people's compulsions. Yeah, our compulsive tendencies taking over your life. Maybe you're worried about a loved one and you want to help them, or perhaps you've been living with OCD for years and you're struggling to cope, or maybe you've just recognised it, listening to Sarah in there, that some things you do, you know, maybe that is what's happening to you. We've got experts in the studio, OCD therapist Craig Shirley, psychologist Emma Kenny here on the end of that phone number, 804044, calls are free from landlines and mobile phones. The email is this morning at itv.com. We need uh, the emails by 11.15 today, so uh, please get in touch. In just a moment, Dr. Chris will be sharing his thoughts on the health stories affecting you. First, though, a competition prize that could see you £70,000.